hi, another hair video, because some time ago, some weeks ago, we got this awesome file from NASA Arnuchesco, and it had some hair in this model that it would look just, to me, it looked great. Actually, everybody was pretty excited. So I made a video, um, it was uh, some time ago, actually, yeah, at the beginning of last month. And I, I made a quick video, just an image, a screen capture of it, and it, you actually got really popular. People got really excited, just as excited as me. But then um, <laughs> talking with the developers said like, there is no real improvements in, 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 in Evie's hair. Like it, that's how it should look. There are a few tweaks that were done, but it's not like the actual improvement to hair. It just happened to look cool. So <laughs> now there has been actual improvements on hair uh, drawing and the uh, Great thing is that it's not only for Eevee, but it's also for cycles in a way, because the settings for hair are now shared and they are now part of Blender's DNA itself. So cycles is going to use is going to use them, and Eevee also can use it, and even other engines can use, for example, the width of the hair or um, different settings. In this case, um, well, let's try how it looks on a simple model. I'm just adding hair. So very simple, um, just hair particles in um, Eevee. Let's see how it looks. And let's see the issue that it had in before is that you will zoom in and no matter which, um, how far you are, it will always have the same size. But now you can enable from the hair settings, you can enable instead of, instead of rendering a strand to render, it, uh, to render it as a strip. So if you put a light here, so if you look at it, actually when you zoom in, the, the, the hair gets wider, so it keeps the, the width. And it has some sort of shading, it's like a little tube. So it's similar to how Cycles would render it, if we switch to Cycles now. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty close, okay, I'm, I'm here I'm blowing it out, but if I, um, let's make, there you go. This is how um, Cycles, this is Cycles, just looks, like this because it doesn't have sample uh, bounces. But if you switch to Eevee, they're pretty close. Of course, Eevee doesn't do the actual geometry around like a tube just to, to make it um, more like faster, it's real time, right? But it, the drawing is actually pretty close. So when you see it on an actual model, you can tell the difference. And again, with the model that we, we got a time ago, let's see how it looks. So the hair looked pretty good, I think, but when you start looking into it, like at the end, especially on the tips, you will find that it all, you can see some strands being like a different size. Some of them were like clamped. And at the end, it was always the same uh, width. But now if you change this um, setting here in the hair, it's in the render properties to a strip, you will see that the hair now fades properly. So you can actually zoom in and you can see the individual's hair strands and you can go out and it's so much better. But um, not only that actually, is that it's now um, properly shaded. So if you add a plane here, let's put it in the back. Let's, um, let's take one of these lamps. I'm going to point it to the other direction. Just want to have some shadows. I'm gonna remove these lamps. And let's make it a spot. So if I point it in the right way without messing, there you go. You can see now that the um, my plane, actually the hairs are casting shadows. That is pretty nice. Of course, if it, it's such a small uh, size that you have to give it a bit of softness in order to get rid of that um, that noise. Oops, and Blender closed. It's under development, guys. But let's uh, open it again. The other thing that it's uh, pretty great is that not now the shading also works with uh, um, the ambient occlusion and with contact shadows, as I was showing and with the regular shadows as well. So if I enable or disable here the shadows, 
amino occlusion, it also shows up. And you can go crazy and make the hair reflective. You can actually, let's, uh, let, let's see if we can do it here. So if you go to the settings of this shader, for example, and I disconnect it, and I add a new um, principal VSDF, I'll crash again. Let's try again. If it doesn't work, I'm gonna give up. Bam, here. Split the window, go Shift F3, and then just let's go to this. Let's add a principal VSDF shader. And it crashed. Okay, I'm not gonna try it again, but basically it means that you can make the hair reflective. You can have and try to make it as reflective as possible. If I don't add a new node, and I just play with this node, let's make it so it's rough, metallic, 100%. And as you can see here, it's completely reflective. And let's add a plane with like a material that it's, let's make it a color that is, there you go. And we enabled the properties for screen space reflections. You can see the plane being reflected <laughs> on the hair. That's crazy. So you can, you can really go uh, very experimental with this and try your own, uh, your own setting for the hair. But it's a great step forward now that Blender itself has its own DNA for uh, settings for hair. So Cycles can use it. Eevee can use it, they can share the settings. So no matter which uh, engine you use, you should set the hair type once, how it looks once, and then each engine will have its own. But yeah, I think it's a, it's a great improvement. And this is not related to the improvements that will come eventually, which are the hair shaders uh, um, project in the Google Summit of Code. But um, that, is, uh, that is a great improvement. Another setting that I shouldn't leave without commenting about is a subdivision setting on the hair itself. So the hair you can, you can when you do like braids or you, when you do hair that is very comped in a way, you can um, set the level of subdivisions in like a lower, si lower size so you can comb it properly. But on render, you can increase those subdivision levels. And that is also part of the hair panel in the render settings. You can add, like increase, so let's see here, for example. In zero, you will see the actual hair keys. But if you increase the subdivision once, twice, or three times even, you would see how smooth the hair can be. And this is not even that expensive because it's done in the GPU. So um, it's, a, it's a nice settings to like simplify in a way the viewport, but also have it very um, subdivided on your render. I think that's it for now. There also has been improvements on the Workbench engine. Now they looked uh, a lot more like when you're actually combing. Um, they also have this setting for strip and strand. It's, it's around, it's about the same. But of course, instead of being an actual tube, it's just uh, like, a, like a plane with shading. So in that case, um, it's faster, the workbench is supposed to be faster to work with. So um, still the hair will respond to the settings, for example, in the viewport display. So if you make it less rough, you still see the effect here, but it's still fast to, to compute. And um, they are drawn also with a little bit of color variation. Right now it's like a 10% uh, variation, so you can actually tell the hairs apart. But overall, hair is getting some love. And uh, let's hope a new particle system or hair continues follows in the future. That is all for now. And I'll see you again in the next video. Ciao.